What's up, everybody? Fred here. We're back today playing some more Total War Warhammer 2. It's our Marcus Wolfheart Vortex campaign. All right, we're doing some tricky stuff right now. We're attempting to besiege the lands of Luther Harkin, who we are currently not at war with. But the Awakening is a quest goal for us. But this location is way too strong to crack. Um, you've got Luther. Tons of Death Guard. Lots of heroes. Tons of artillery. Rotting Prometheans, Morn Ghouls, Necrofex Colossus. Like, there's just too much here. The Death Guard are probably the biggest deterrent. We have a lot of Huntsmen, which makes us great on open field, but really bad in sieges. Our builds are just not designed for sieges so far. Um, not to say we can't throw together a great group of units to, to be great at sieges, but right now we don't have that. So what we need to do is pull apart Luther Harkins domain by attacking Juan Hopek, which we're going to do, and we're also going to attack the Pox March next turn. Okay, so something I wanted to do real quick before we get going. Um, this is probably the main threat right here. I took the Machu Peaks in the last episode in that horrible siege. Um, we're going to try to reinforce it, get it a garrison, and try not to die also. Um, we're recruiting some units to replenish our losses. Our replenishment is actually through the roof right now. Um, I'm worried about this army here recruiting a bunch of guys and attacking me next turn. Here with like no units in the garrison. Champions. We have no front line. The spearmen don't get a chance to finish. Protector. Sometimes you can discourage the AI from attacking you by recruiting another unit. Making yourself, you know, a little bit stronger in the balance of power. So we're going to do that with the Opsonite Gyrocopter. And hope that that's enough that that way they won't attack us. Um, this is a cool special unit that we got for doing all of Yorick's quests. And we did all of them. So we didn't take the second to read his chapter 5, the Expedition's Engineer. And you'll see here we are done. So let's uh, let's take a look and read it. It says, in return for helping him obtain all the raw materials he has desired thus far, Yorick has accepted a permanent position with my expedition. This is most fortunate for he has proven himself a valuable member of the hunting party, whose unique skills make him integral to our mission. More than that, Yorick has become a loyal friend. One day, as we enjoyed a barrel of Bugmans together, he revealed to me the rest of his sorry story. Once a member of the Cragbrow clan of Barak Var, Yorick was commissioned to design new steamships for his throng, but utilized methods of engineering that eschewed dwarf traditions. He knew there was great potential in his designs, regardless of the techniques used to develop them, but could never see them through to completion, due to sabotage by his jealous ultra-traditionalist peers. In the end, Yorick was ousted from the Engineers Guild and left for good. Truly, the dwarves are a strange lot. Now with the freedom and raw materials to develop any invention he chooses, I have never seen a happier dwarf in all my life. I have little doubt that in time, the potential brain children of this brilliant inventor will help turn the tide of our struggle here in Lustra. And he's already starting, so I don't know... Uh, before I recruited, I should have looked to see how many um, turns it takes in between us recruiting those maybe nine or so turns but I'd love to get tons of gyrocopters how cool would that be uh, this is not the army I would have chosen to put them in uh, but it's the one I have so okay with that done let's go ahead and roll for the next turn let everybody speed along we have a rebellion I think that's down here on the mini map we'll have to see what's up so a big thing, before we go to war with Luther, we need to see who else is at war with him. Because maybe someone will pay us to join their war. Alright, Salastra's dead. Somebody crush her. That's Salastra's faction, the Drowned. Interesting. I don't think there's any coming back for her. So we're being raided by the Rebellion. This place needs to upgrade. It doesn't quite have the Empire Captain yet. Hmm. Also, the Star Tower. This place is a good bit stronger, though. Hmm. I think the Star Tower is safe. No. Holy crap, look at this guy. Ridiculous. Um... That's a powerful army. The Tyrants of the Black Ocean. 
Dastin Cold Eye Leviathan Rage. He's got a Charybdis Feral Manticores, Doomfire Warlocks, Black Guard. He's level 35. Jesus. Okay. I see you. <laughs> I see you, buddy. You don't have to flex so hard. Let's come up here and first things first, I want I know where I want to spend some of this money. It's got to go in the basic walls. I hated to get rid of a a leveled up money making building, but you got to do what you got to do. I don't know if this any of this matters much. But we do need to get another. Let's get just grab another spearman while we're sitting here healing. Pahuax is still strong. We've got lots of upgrades we can do. Um, blacksmith here. We can always alter this if we need to. Huh. What else were we going to put here? Tron of Sigmar would be okay, and Imperial Academy would be okay. Mostly good for increasing our research rate. Don't necessarily need a tap room as long as our garrison is powerful. I'd actually prefer to have rebellions that I can easily beat. Because that's what allows me to, uh... To make money, kind of on the side. So... It looks like we can't quite reach uh, Juan Hopek. So we're going to move forward here and camp so we don't take any of that damage. We can attack the Pox Marsh right now. Hmm. Let's see. My thought process right now is that if we attack Juan Hopek... Or rather, if we attack the Pox Marsh, maybe there's an army here that I can't see, and it'll move to reinforce Juan Hopek, whereas right now the AI might not realize that I'm looking to pounce. So that's kind of my thought. Um, I think it may be time for us to build up another oh, army. Man. As much as I love having this much income per turn, we may need another army. Get some halberds and let's get some hmm. start with the cheap stuff generally let's get two crossbowmen we'll have much stronger infantry i think in this core and we'll put in some great swords put in some mortars we can make this army much better at besieging and i think that's going to be the play they will rebel. And I may drop a lord here just to give us a better chance of winning. We can't see what they're recruiting, but if they start getting like hell pit abominations and things like that, we need to be careful. So we're going to wait one more turn to attack. We will do two attacks in one turn. Let's just move next to the Pox Marsh. That's fine. That's fine. Everyone's looking good. I see that stuff in the water. Hopefully we can go and get that. Okay. And let's take a second to see... Let's look at the diplomacy screen. Let's go to the Vampire Coast. So the Lizardmen aren't going to help us, but... The Loremasters might. So we'll have to check that out next turn. They might pay us to go to war with them. That would be awesome. Wisdom awake. Oh, it's you. Excellent. We are strength rank three. That's great. I haven't checked on that in a while. Order of the Lore Masters are seven. We can't really see the, the most powerful guys. I think I've kind of left to assume that Ulthuan might be united. And they're they're hugging that that top spot. Either way, let's roll it. We're gonna start eating into that income in a pretty serious way once we fill out that other stack but we'll have one more whole stack that we can use to exert our control over our domain and we'll chew through this area pretty fast what we need to do is lure out luther from the awakening we don't want to have to fight 30 elite units behind walls with an army for, you know comprised almost completely of huntsmen it's just it's not going to go well for us 
You know, Marcus, as cool as he is, he's not a Kolek. He can't, I can't just run him in through the gates and let him kill 500 guys. It's not going to happen. Okay, trait gained. Aldous got the builder. Nice. Sea legs on Marcus. Even more campaign movement range for him, which is awesome. And Hertwig von Hall. Wow, so... Holy crap, they all gained it? No way. Marcus, That's the most broken thing I've ever seen in this game, I think. All of our heroes just gained the sea legs. That's 25% campaign movement range that we just picked up. That's unbelievable. Okay, let's see if the Order of the Lore Masters will pay us to join their war. They may or they may not. Okay, hi. Perfect. We just got paid 1,300 gold to do something we were going to do regardless All right. Kill to protect. this is an easy auto resolve and the pox marsh is now ours decent experience we could sack it let's just occupy it untainted nice ooh but we we got up to a condemned level wasn't really trying to do that but here we go And that sped up the Imperial Supplies by like six turns. So these are our reinforcements now. Three Halberdiers, three Huntsmen, two Greatswords. That's great. That's basically exactly what I want to put in that other stack that I'm currently building. Uh, there's the Elite Cavalry reinforcements, which I like as well. More Reichsguard, Demigriff Knights. Sounds awesome. Um, this is a ton of artillery too. Hellblaster, two Great Cannons, two Outriders with Grenade Launchers, one Hellstorm. I don't think I'm going to go for that. Uh, Steam Tank and the Luminarch of Hish. Luminarchs can be cool. I've, I've managed to do pretty big work with them. Uh, I just don't think we have any of the builds for it. If you're playing like a, let's say, a Volkmar the Grim, you put him on his big war wagon, you get him his region and some awesome items... And you just send them out into a huge blob, and then you just shoot into it with the Luminarch. You'll get like a thousand kills on that thing. When Archon, Archeon, and you know the Chaos Horde start coming down from the north, you fight three or four armies at once, and you'll get a Luminarch that gets like a thousand kills. Or you'll just snipe out Kolek with a couple shots. It's the Steam Tank that I really love. Uh, but I think I'm actually going to go for the Elite Cavalry. We're going to go for Knightly Orders. And because we researched... It's been a while, guys, I know. Uh, where did that go? Because of our research, we also picked up one great sword and two hand gunners, which is cool. So that saves us a little bit of gold. We actually got some levels here, cool. And we're just gonna make our boy as deadly as possible. Extra powder, sure. Probably not gonna come up just because of the the way we built our. Our forces. Extra missile resistance. Extra speed would help her with kiting. Let's just make her as much of a sniper as possible. So Pox Marsh. Yeah, we're going to sell this. Don't need it. And then here. We're going to move in and finally take this place. We have cannons, so we don't have to besiege it. We can just jump right into this battle. Should not be a tough one. We'll pick a side. We'll knock down some towers. We'll take our time here. No reason to lose anything to these crummy hand gunners. Uh, cannons and hellblasters really suck in these types of sieges. Having one or two of them... Is it terrible just for knocking down towers right away? But you would much rather have mortars in these type of situations. This weird terrain. We have this big lake back here. Um, let's take this one. We'll come in from this angle. I don't like how tightly packed all these towers are. That's going to be a lot of extra damage that we don't need. 
First things first, we'll kind of just put all of these together. The range difference between the cannons and the Hellblasters is not going to be a major factor here. We'll just scoot the Hellblaster up a little bit more. And they should be able to shoot just about anything. We'll get the, uh, the Spearmen as our ladder climbing crew. Our two unbreakable units, Tattersouls and the Sigmar Sons with Aldovs, they'll go through the, the gatehouse. Our archers are going to scoot up and shoot high. I don't anticipate our handgunners doing actual anything except taking volleys. Spaghetti them. But... Our Outriders with Grenade Launchers might actually do something, which would be cool. Okay. So we're not cheesing it completely, but we have taken one flank, and we're going to choose to overload it. You know, we're not going to put everyone in this one little corner right here. That stuff is just so lame. And you know what? I'm actually going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Because I have different ideas for what we're going to target. The Hell Blaster is really amazing at taking down gates. I totally forgot about that. So let's take this out. Actually, let's take this one out. They didn't even put anyone there. Let's get our spearmen up top. Get them there. I don't know why our artillery is moving forward. I can't stand that. It's a weird bug. But they're gonna melt this gate with the Hell Blaster. Yeah, beautiful. And we need to kind of get out of here. We're taking way too much damage. There's these little rocks right here. I can't actually get away. Our cannons have destroyed that one tower. So let's see if we can't destroy the other. Let's shoot these zombie pirate gunnery mobs in the back. I wanted to get them at a at a nice angle and shoot over and into these guys, but it's not it's not really working. And perfect. We're in. That's how fast they can take that stuff down, those towers. Hand gunners won't do anything. Except take damage as we predicted. Yes, General. And they just don't have the right arch. I tried to keep them back, but they went a little too close. Come on, guys, get up there. The wall, and now there's really nothing else for our artillery to do. Except stay a little bit on Overwatch. And he doesn't have any of his AoE stuff yet. Let's get in there. Sigmar, you go there. Sigmar Sons. Make sure we're, we're continuously trying, at least, to push through. To move the handgunners here, maybe they can get some shots over somebody's head. Who knows? Spearmen versus Sirens is a pretty big mismatch. Not in our favor. Oh, those are Death Guard. Okay, we got to be careful about those guys. The biggest problem with our armies, really, is that we don't have a lot of AoE magic to clear out stupid infantry blobs like this. We're just going to have to grind it out with these things. Kill hundreds of them and break them. Let's move over here a little bit. See if our archers can't shoot sideways into these sirens. Ready for war. Get rid of these dudes. Come on. For okay, they got some magic going off. Looks like they're kind of hitting the sirens. 
which probably doesn't do a lot of damage because of their physical resistance, but what it will do is start to break them if they're getting shot in the back. Where are, where are all my Sigmar sons? What are y'all doing, guys? Get in. Just get in, guys. We've got to path everyone through. These depth guards with pole arms are going to be a problem. They'll probably kill who knows how many of us. They're up to they only got two kills so far, but Ghost is still not clear. Alright, Sigmar Sons. Y'all y'all get all the way in. Our handgunners aren't hitting anyone. And we're attempting to shoot over these crenellations and hit these units. But I don't think we're really succeeding. And now let's just get ourselves on the other side of this. We'll attack these zombie pirates in the back. We'll go fight Booty Snatcher over there. How many kills are up to? Only 10. Wow, their DPS is really lacking. I feel. That's all they were able to do. The I mean, I know they're made, of course, for fighting large targets, but... Oh, God. What are you doing, guys? Stop. Let's, uh... Turn off their fire at will. Because they're really just blasting me. Yeah, I think most of them are up here fighting spearmen. You go there. And let's go ahead and help Sigmar's sons. Yeah, our entire army is just made for open field combat, which we're not doing. And you know what? Let's come over here and shoot these deck droppers. Maybe we can reach them from here with the cannons. Who knows? Depth Guard are getting swarmed. Siren's up to 43 kills, but the archers are still firing. Occasionally landing a shot, I'm sure. Okay, mode it. Just men with pointy sticks doing doing the Lord's work. Wow, they dismantled that guy. Deck droppers are coming in. We're trying to chase down Booty Snatcher here. Who is a gunnery white. Big Mar Sons would do great versus them. Get these handgunners in. Start shooting. Just got to get these uh, spearmen out of their way. I don't like that we're getting shot in the back. Sigmar Sons do have shields, um, but these things will be gone in a second. Once the handgunners start actually opening up. And we're out of ammo. The scary thing about the Death Guard, if you're not aware, is that they have the hunger, like vampire units do. Because they are themselves vampires. We just spread out a little bit, or else we're not going to get the full value from our handgunners. Yes, sir. Quickly. Hand one of you shoot, one of you move. Come on, guys. Let's get out of the way. And we'll watch their HP plummet. Yes, sir. They're very effective if they're unchallenged, our deck droppers. These are the pistol variant. They do have a handgun variant. The Empire Charging into melee. You don't see that very often. I would not have expected the AI to think to do this. But they're going to get wrecked now. You just come over here, buddy. Sorry, should be... They are crumbling. So they're losing HP. We don't even have to really fight them. 
And I'm sure we can speed it up now. Probably could have sped it up a minute ago. The Gunnery White's is running. Crumbling. And that's GG. Alright. It was all about really minimum losses. Making sure the towers didn't each rack up a couple hundred kills on our spearmen and our archers and everything else. A little bit sloppy in the beginning with these guys, but I mean, look how many kills they ultimately got. I figured they would be one of the more useful units. It was just all about finding that range. In the beginning when they moved up too close, it's very tricky to find the right range. And it just comes with like experience in the game, knowing what like the, arc, the arcs are for different types of units. And there we go. So Roderick Langui. Whoa. Okay, after your successful assault upon Juan Hopek, Roderick disappears. He returns a few hours later, telling you that he had gone to seek closure for the losses of his men by gathering what he could of their remains and performing burial rites. He thanks you for making this possible, drops to his knees, and presents you with an ornately decorated sword recovered from his most trusted bodyguard after he fell during the ambush. A lavish but deadly blade which once belonged to Roderick's highest ranking bodyguard. It's a strong weapon. I would want to give it to Roderick, but I don't know if it's something that, like, one of the weapons we got, it, like, had to go on Marcus, which is weird. This gives all our melee infantry units plus 5% speed, which is a little strange. But I don't know if it gives everyone expert charge defense or just him. I'm going to refuse the sword. Targeted by Duke Tootle. The past has an unpleasant habit of coming back to bite one. So he gets an extra ambush success chance. Our ambush success chance is off the charts. And this place has an iron mine. More upkeep reduction. I love it. Uh, but first things first, basic walls. And I like that they already have a tap room. That's going to help us stabilize this place. But we need to upgrade it very quick. That way we can get a shrine to Sigmar. And start lowering some of this vampiric corruption. Ready to serve. Alright, irrepressible. And then we'll be on to Quartermaster soon enough. And let's go ahead and read. Let's read um, Roderick's thing. That was his... A Bretonian without a home. So I guess we're going to read two parts now. Hope you don't mind. Feel free to fast forward if you would like. We already have Pox March, so all we have to do is move from there. After avenging the death of his men at Juan Hopek, I have realized more and more that Roderick still bears within him a great resentment of something deeper. The only thing he has revealed thus far is that there are those back home in his dukedom of Angui who would sooner see him dead than allow him to return. However, I have developed too much respect for the man just to ask about what sounds like a complicated past. After all, many an ill-advised adventurer has come to seek riches in this place for one reason or another most of whom underestimate how terrifying a place Lustria really is. The galleons that steadily trickle into the New World colonies constantly bring greedy fools from the Old World, who have unwisely braved the perilous crossing of the Great Ocean, just for an opportunity to plunder cities they are not sure even exist. Of course, they all become lizard feed in the end, but not Roderick. He may very well be one of these greedy fools, but to have faced the lizardmen and survived marks him out as a warrior we could really do with having around regardless of his past indiscretions. Okay. So he gets massively reduced enemy lord's damage resistance in final battle. I don't know what that means. Well, let's read the last one, the unfavored heir. To help our friend Roderick, I have ordered the expedition to march towards Pox Marsh. There, he claims, we will intercept the assassins who wish him dead before they even know what hit them. One evening, as we pitch camp for the night, Along the route, Roderick pulled me out away from the campfire for a private word. With the deep sadness in his tone, he revealed that Lord Tootle, the unsavory individual who had ordered his death, is actually the Duke of Angui, Roderick's homeland. But even more shocking is the fact that the Duke is actually Roderick's father. So Roderick is a prince of Angui. He went on to explain that he is an unfavored heir, seen as a threat to the Duke's desired successor, Roderick's younger brother. The reason why Roger came here with only a ragtag force in the first place has now become clear. 
The Duke had sent his son to Lustria under the guise of wanting him to prove himself, but in reality was counting on him perishing. It seems the Duke underestimated both Roderick's skill as a swordsman and his will to live. I have reassured Roderick that he has nothing to fear, and together we shall vanquish these would-be assassins. So if we had done that in a different way... Could we step out? I shall fight yes. The there we go. Boom. After a few nights discreetly camping out in Pox Marsh, your lookout spots a galleon approach and drop off what appears to be a small rowboat filled with about a dozen men or so. As they reach the beach, your forces immediately unleash a hail of arrows, killing all but one of them. The lone survivor rolls around in the sand in agony. An arrow buried in his knee, of course it is. Guys, I love Skyrim. That's such a great game. Roderick treks out towards the would-be assassin with his sword drawn, and you follow. Take no action. In all fairness, and to truly feel the humility and solemnity such occasions require, the one who passes judgment should also swing the axe. And there's a Game of Thrones reference. So, wow. 20% weapon strength. And enemy leadership minus 5, wherever he is. Or merciful, stop Roderick. All units in the army, upkeep reduction, god, forgiveness is a beautiful thing without which men struggle to move on with their lives. I'm going to stop Roderick just because I want that amazing upkeep reduction. And he now has Wolf Hearted. Hardened by his years of bitter, bloody experience, Roderick was becoming a loner. Now he's found a new pack with which to run. Extra melee attack, plus 15% hit points, the ability is shatter, it's a breath attack. Wow. He hits the ground with such force that anyone nearby is shaken to their very core, and he's unbreakable. Man, if we had taken that, uh, <laughs> the plus 20% weapon strength, plus the sword, which I think he would have gotten, maybe, but I don't know. Because it seemed like he was offering it to Marcus. And now we just jump right back in. And that's it. We're done with... Roderick's as well. So now we just need uh, Aisha's Blessing, which is the Emerald Pool. Which I think means we have to take... We have to take Itza. And then we also have to capture the Awakening, and that is for his Chapter 4. We get a rewarding choice. At least now we know we have these two things at the last battle. So let's read A Prince Born of a Pauper. What a sorry state of affairs this truly is for Prince Roderick. We dealt with Duke Tootle's assassins without issue, but only time will tell if this will be the last attempt to prevent his son from returning to Angui. Roderick himself seems uninterested in returning anyway. He tells me he has no intention of claiming power in a land he now feels no attachment to, for the jungle has become his home. The last piece of Roderick's story, the reason why his father wants him dead, had eluded me until recently, simply because Roderick had kept it secret. Now I know why. For it is a source of great shame for him. Though Roderick was his father's eldest son, his mother was a commoner who was Duke Tootle's peasant concubine. Fearing would have no other sons, the Duke recognized and brought Roderick into his household from birth. But when Roderick's younger brother was unexpectedly born of the Duke's lawful wife, Roderick was forsaken. Prince Roderick remains the rightful heir to the Dukedom of Angui, and as long as he lives, it is feasible that Duke Tootle will attempt to remove him by sending assassins once again. As always, we must stay vigilant on his behalf. Awesome. Okay. So we've got a lot of stuff going on right now. Star Tower. I see those dudes down there. I'm very curious when they will choose to attack. Let's take some of this ridiculous gold we have. And recruit another lord down here. A tactician. It's really just like what kind of lord do I want. Imperius. That's cool. Yeah, I think we're going to go with the guy that's going to give us increased income. And let's just get some archers. Cheap archers. Public order, untainted. Magic item drop chance. Sure, we'll do all this stuff. And let's give him route marcher. Ooh, that's campaign movement range. We want that. Public order. Done. And if we can finish recruiting these units before they attack, that'll be a huge help in this upcoming fight. 
Star Tower should be fine. I'm not I'm not that worried about Star Tower. Um, here we go. Unbreakable group of guys coming from that direction. We're going to recruit two Reichsguard to this army. Actually, hold on. What do we have up here? That's a full stack. But I can't help but feel like we should drop something. No, that's fine. That's fine. Let's... Let's grab... Two Reichsguard here. I could have sworn we had some halberdiers as well. But I guess not. Great sword. What do we... What do we got going on over here? I almost feel like I want to get rid of one of these huntsmen for a great sword. Just so we have more of a front line. Huntsman General. Hmm. Let's do this. This is a real dangerous stack now. This is no joke. Huntsman General. That makes this this battle coming up pretty trivial, I do believe. And here, huh? Man, I want to use the black lions. We got to get them in here somehow. Uh, let's just grab the demigriffs and throw them into this army. We're gonna save the halberds for something else, and we're really jacking up our income right now. But I think it's fine. Start upgrading some of these little buildings. Because every time we do, we increase our income. What we could do is try and do something sneaky. We could uh, lay an ambush here and see who comes to us. But we don't know how strong that, that force has gotten. And they can see us. Of he is an assassin. I'd be willing to bet we can kill this guy. Heretic. Critical success. Dead. Get out of here. And we got a level for that. Um, Let's go ahead and just... Give him one more level of assassinate. Ever vigilant. That was a good grab. Is there anything else we want to do? We only have 800 gold. Probably can't do much. What we should do, though, is look at Diplomacy. And see, we, I don't think we've asked for gold for a while. Some of our allies might just hook us up. You know what, I bet they, they might give us something like 500. Check it out. No, maybe they'll give me 300? Yep, okay. I'll take it. Yeah, no way they give me that. This is worth it every now and then. A couple hundred gold sometimes well, makes the I difference mean, between having the having the gold you need when you need it. Not possible. You never want to be stuck As right before some major battle. Would you have of me? Wishing you had an extra 300 gold. That puts us up to 1100. I'm willing to bet there's something somewhere we can build for 1100. Maybe not. Alright. Whatever, we're good to go. We're about to have state troop standards finished. You know what I really want? This is what I need to do. I need to recruit some heroes. Uh, we can get one more Empire Captain and one more Battle Wizard. For the sake of fun, let's get someone else. We can get a Death Caster or an Amethyst Wizard. I really like Amber Wizards. They have some fun spells. Plus, these dudes can end up riding Griffins. Discipline is a really good trait. Leadership plus melee attack. Lore of Life Wizards are probably the most useful. Noble's kind of great. Especially if you're just going to be sitting still with them for a long time. 
But Monster Tracker I was looking at because it's going to give us increased movement range, which is so important in Lustria. Tough, fleet-footed. Hmm. Maybe we just get a Firecaster and send them down here. Let them join there. And for an Empire Captain, we don't have the gold right now. But it'd probably be a good idea to get one. Why do all our captains have eye patches? That's... We need to invest in some eye protection. In the army, we had to wear stuff called eye pro. It's like these big ballistic goggles that had inserts in them if you had prescription glasses, and they were always so hard to see from. I'm thankful that I was part of a military force that had the money to waste <laughs> on trying to protect my eyes. But whenever you're at like a range or something and you're trying to shoot, having like three layers of goggle in between you and your target is super difficult. I'm glad none of these mercs are attacking me right now. Alright, happy that's done. Because that'll free us up. One of these is the one I really wanted. So the plus 15 armor. That's huge. Our research rate is 170%. We haven't done any of these. I kind of want to do them. Super expensive though. I was starting to wonder whether or not me not doing this was part of why we haven't seen any of those uh you know particular dilemmas let's try it. it only takes one turn it's one turn's worth of income which does suck to lose out on might have some stuff we can give here might have some extra casting items we don't and it takes 1100 for that We could come up here and just smash Kotex Causeway. Nope. Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to hold off. Just keep chilling. I have to imagine that we're going to get hit next turn. We need to make sure we still have 50% movement range. That way we can encamp, and then we'll hit this area next turn. Okay, I don't see Luther. He appears to have moved. Pox Marsh is ready for upgrades. Go take this place. Flax. Once I control this whole area, at least I'll be able to see everything. You better get in there. There we go. The and the Griffin banner. Let's give that to Roderick. Whenever That's he's in melee, he'll gone. lower people's leadership. Look how much weight the balance bar gives to a witch hunter. It's crazy. No take. And pirate hunter. So now we get some great buffs when fighting against them. Apprentice Wizard, that's a good item, considering we just recruited some wizards. Huh. Let's grab Rally. We're working our way towards that special ability. We'll take Counter Strike here. The special ability that will make our Huntsmen even stronger, as long as they're above a certain level. And we'll sell that. We don't need it. I mean, I feel like Luther's right here waiting to take the blood swamps from me. And that's a real army now. We need to be somewhat concerned about... They're, they're definitely going to lay siege to us next turn. I'm seeing a lot of slaves. For all I know, this the rest of this is like... Serious artillery, you know, storm vermin. We can't think we're out of the woods just yet. 
Blood Swamps is going to have a rebellion. It's no good. Has anyone not moved yet? I don't think so. We want him to stay here. I'm hoping that that big and vulnerable or unbreakable army doesn't go to the monument or to Plaxlana. So far in our playthrough, they've only gone here. Okay, let's roll it. And we're nearly done for the day. We've made a lot of progress. I think I see Luther here. Or is that the... No, that's the Rebellion. Okay. Looks like a Strigoi vampire. Ghoul king down there. We gotta see where Luther is. But I didn't see where he went last turn. Is this him? It's hard to tell. Because if we close the rest of this stuff off... Nice. I'm going to pay the tribute. So the omens are ill. Something you have done has angered the gods, yet they are fickle. They may forgive you in time. Or more immediate appeasement might be necessary. So our public order is so low. A thousand gold is nothing. At this point in the game. Nice. Architect gain. Tier 3. And they'll attack us next turn, and they'll, they'll, I'm sure they'll take it. Sometimes they attack prematurely, but not often. Unflinching. Garrisoning. Okay, let's go there. Come down here, and... Hmm. Start making gold, I guess. True servant of Sigma. Your word is my command. Take this area. Luckily, their public order is very stable. And after we take these places, we can just kind of sit at them for a minute and try and lock down the public order. Yes, quartermaster. Thank you. Get rid of that. These places are going to be strictly used for income. And we finish the emissary to the Prince of Altdorf. Not sure how much that matters, but it's going to give us plus one public order. That's cool. And now we're going for the state-issued infantry armor. 15 armor is a big deal. We're going to reach out to attack, but we're not really going to. I just want to see what the army is. And they are all Skaven slaves? Are you kidding me? The complete disrespect. Well, there's no way they can win a siege. No way in actual hell. Huntsman General. Okay, these are actually both gonna be extremely easy battles for me. Strike let's first. um let's Strike quick save fast. here. I think we're gonna auto resolve this. As long as I don't lose any units. Yeah, crush them. And we might have some fun real quick. And just smash those that huge army of, of Skaven slaves. So like, how nice was that? <laughs> just instantly broken. Sure, we'll just give this guy all of our banners. And start giving him Fervent as well, so we can get rid of some of this. Help us get rid of some of this Skaven tank. Give him a couple Spearmen. We're not rich enough yet to just constantly be drawing money from our uh, global recruitment. Because the markup on that is so huge. Get that in there. Okay, we're full on Witch Hunters there. Get ourselves a captain. I like strong. Sure, we'll just get a strong guy. Move him there. I think we have an extra... I thought we had an extra sword. Maybe not. And that'll go a long way to buff up the profile of this army. Um, we could cheapen out a little bit and just get a couple spears.
Uh, but what we really need is a Shrine of Sigmar here. We'll pick that up. Wow, they sent another guy after me, eh? We need 600 to assassinate him. Alright, and we secured a province. So this province... Normally I just go for, like, growth early on. Before most of the settlements are level 3. Uh, but tax rate's also great. Untainted would be good. Public order would also be great. Uh, but the public order's already kind of low as long as we're sitting here. So let's just go for the tax rate. Money really will fix all of our problems. Sure, we'll lose that. If this dude attacks us, we're going to be in a, a rough position. We'd love to get this guard house. We're just we're not balling enough right now. You require us he didn't give me any return. gold last time. Maybe he'll do it this time. Never. Let's see if he'll give us eight hundred. No. No. All right. I think he'll give us three hundred for sure. Consider it yeah, five hundred. Okay. He took it, sucker. Did the colonies give us any money? No, okay. 800 is not enough to do what we were trying to do. We can get some clay pits. Not super helpful. Uh, we could stop recruiting these two spearmen. That's probably more important. We have enough units there to, to defend what we're trying to defend. Oh, that still doesn't give us enough. Man, that's kind of annoying. Well, let's, um, I want to keep making progress. Let's assassinate this guy. The odds are really well, are really good that we're going to be able to do it. So I'm, I'm confident when I say that. Um, and we can, I guess, get those, uh, at least one of those spearmen. No, we can get both of them. Okay, so nothing of value was lost. And let's roll the dice one more time. And I think this will be it, guys. This is a pretty packed episode. Oh, I forgot the Skaven slaves that are besieging us. We'll take we'll take them out soon. So some another hero, I guess, tried to attack Emil, but failed. Good for us. I would have felt pretty dumb if he'd have got sniped while I had him out of the army. But we'll probably just be able to turn around and kill him now. He's still building up his forces. Huntsman General, garrisoning. Let's send Dietz up top. Fight for our nation. Yeah, I think we'll start tomorrow by crushing some uh, some Skaven slaves. That should be pretty fun. Did Luther Harkin roll out to come and get me? Oh, you dummy. You stupid dummy. Oh, man. He just made it so easy. Oh, my God. His army sucks versus me. My huntsmen are going to melt him. Oh, man. I have no idea how long I've been recording for, but I kind of want to take this fight. Oh, you stupid dummy. Where is... I still don't know where that other army is. You know what, guys? We will have to save that for the next episode. Let's get the Imperial Port. Spend some cash. Spend some cash to get some cash. It's going to take forever to get our money back. But I'm cool with that. And then in the meantime, we'll move back down to Juan Hopek. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. Look forward to the next episode where we are going to crush Luther Harkin and a stack of Skaven slaves. Probably lose the Blood Swamps. Have to take that back. No doubt we're going to get smashed probably in two sides from all different types of Lizardmen armies. It's going to be a wild one next episode, but thank you so much for watching. And as always, y'all, I will see you in the next one. Take care.